Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you that we can learn more about you. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, learn from the lesson this morning. And we just pray you bless also the object lesson later on for the craft. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good. All right, what are we learning about today? But well, let's first of all remember what we learned about last week. Who remembers what we learned about last week? I'll give you a bit of a hint. Oh, who remembers? No, I have to remember. What happened last week? What happened last week? Last week we learned about suffering as a Christian. Suffering as a Christian. Sometimes when you do what's right, you get in trouble. But does that mean you don't do what's right? No, you make sure you do what's right. Sometimes, being a Christian, you're going to go through some hard times. But we need to rejoice, not be sad. Okay, what's some ways we can suffer as a Christian? One, whoops. What's some ways we can suffer as a Christian? Do you remember? Yeah, not being naughty like the other kids, right? Sometimes they're being naughty and you may get excluded, but you should always do the right thing. Even if other kids may not like you for not doing what they're doing. Is that right? That's one way you can suffer as a Christian, doing what's right. What about this one? You remember this one? Simon? Very good. Sometimes as a Christian, you might not sound the same as the other sheep. Right? You might not look the same, but does that mean you change if you're doing what's right? No. If you're doing what's right by God, we should stay different, shouldn't we? If we're doing the right thing. And the last one, who remembers? Sarah? Yeah, sometimes people aren't happy. Talk, you talking about Jesus or talking about God, but should you stop? Talking about Jesus, talking about God, just because some people are angry? No, we shouldn't. Okay? So sometimes we have to suffer as a Christian. Now this week, we are talking about worldliness. Worldliness. I don't know if you know what worldliness is. Worldliness, some people get confused with what worldliness is. Some people think, hey, don't you your clothing? No, you got to sit quietly. Some people get confused with what worldliness is. They think it's just things that are in the world. No. The chair, this chair is in the world. Anything wrong with chairs? No, nothing wrong with chairs. Everyone's sitting on a nice comfy chair today. Not everybody has nice comfy chairs when they go to church. Do you know that? Worldliness. Worldliness is the opposite of godliness. Who knows what godliness is? Godliness. What do you think what godliness is? Oh, bless you. What's godliness? Yeah, it's close. That's got to do with God, yes. Godliness. Yeah, that's right, it's the opposite of worldliness. So godliness is when we do what's right. When we act more like God. Yeah, God is holy, God is perfect, God is just. The more we try and be like God, we try and do the right thing, that's godliness. And you're right, right? It's opposite. Right? Opposite means they're different things, right? So godliness is the opposite of worldliness. So if you know what godliness is, if godliness is doing what's right, what do you think worldliness is? If godliness is doing what's right, what do you think worldliness is? Not doing what's right, exactly. It's the opposite, isn't it? So this is godliness, it's light and righteousness. Worldliness is doing what's wrong, isn't it? And the Bible tells us a bit about world, worldliness, that it's opposite, that you can't mix the two. Look at this in 1 John 2, 15. It says, love not the world. So this doesn't mean love not the things that are in the world. Like, is it saying don't love the chair? No. It's saying don't love each other? No, we're in the world. It's talking about specific thing, worldliness. We're going to learn about that soon. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you see there that the love of worldliness, things in the world, is the opposite of the love of the Father. All right, so the more worldliness you have in you, you know what? The less love of God you have in you. Isn't that right, Noah? The less love of God you have in you. So 
What happens if you have more love of God in you? What happens? Uh, you have godliness. Yes, you have more godliness and you have less worldliness, don't you? So that's why we want to love God, like the Bible says, with our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So you can't mix the two, they're opposites. So let's see what does the Bible mean by worldliness? We're talking about opposites here, you can't mix the two. We're going to look later because we have an object lesson where. We're going to look at oil and water. And if you know, when you mix oil and water, what happens? You can't mix the two, can you? So this is like the love of the Father. This is like the love of the world. Even though you mix it in, they have to be separate. They're opposites. All right, 1 John 2.16. We're going to look at this quickly. What is worldliness? For all that is in the world. Look at this. The Bible tells us. The lusts of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Look at this. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So now we know what the Bible's talking about when it talks about worldliness. We've got three things here. What is it? The lusts of the flesh, which body, things that make you feel good, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life. So let me give you some pictures just so you can remember. For all that is in the world, we got lust of the flesh. Oh, Oh, you can see Atticus's mouth go big. Ooh, yummy. See, sometimes the lust of the flesh is people eating too much things they shouldn't eat. You know, maybe you have a couple of candies, it's okay. But sometimes you just want to eat it all, don't you? Makes you feel really good. You know, eating all that candy is like the lust of the flesh. Some people find it hard to control what they eat. They eat too much of the bad things. So there's an example of the lusts of the flesh. Doing things just because it makes you feel good. Sometimes eating too much. People say gluttony, gluttony, eating too much. So that's one, lusts of the flesh, things that make you feel good. What about lusts of the eyes? I don't know if you've seen this photo before. Oh, what's this guy doing? Oh no, he's, he's with his partner here. He's looking at somebody else. That's no good, is he? All right, so lust of the eyes. I think the older boys, they know what I'm talking about, don't you? Say lust of the eyes, so sometimes things you're looking, you shouldn't be looking at. All right, that you want to look at, but you shouldn't be looking at, like this guy. Yeah, you shouldn't be looking at her like that. He is lust of the eyes. Okay, so we got lust of the flesh, things that make you feel good. Lust of the eyes, things that you want to look at, but you shouldn't. And what's the last one? Who remembers? Right, put your hand up. Which one? Pride. pride of life. How does this represent the pride of life? Me, me, me. It's all about me. Look, he thinks he's so good, eh? With his sunglasses on. Sometimes we get that attitude, don't we? When we think we're all hot stuff, like this kid. But we don't want to have the pride of life. So we're just thinking about ourselves. We're not humble, we're not meek. Right? Instead, we are proud. Okay? So, the opposite, what's the opposite of worldliness? It would be godliness, wouldn't it? So the godliness would be like the fruit of the Spirit. Remember we learned about the fruit of the Spirit. We got love and joy. Who remembers them? What's the next one? Remember? Love, joy, peace. peace. Very good. Next one. Anyone remember? Long-suffering. Long Who knows another one? Faith is one, two. And we got gentleness. Goodness, whoops, I probably need to replace these batteries. Faith, you got Sarah, go. what's the last two? Got one? Meekness. Meekness, very good. And the last one, you remember? It starts with T. Oh. Hey, I have to choose you. Yes, you got it. Make sure I choose you before you yell out. Right, and temperance, very good. And you can see here the opposite, isn't it? So here, when you saw the lust of the flesh, it's eating all the candy you want. No, but temperance, you've got some discipline. No, he can look at it, but he's refraining himself. Okay, against such there is no law. Okay, so, recap. What is the opposite of the love of the Father? What was the opposite? Worldliness. Worldliness, the love of the world. Very good. And what are some examples of the love of... Law of worldliness. Who remembers the first one? 
Who remembers the first one? Did you have the first one? No? In the back there? No? Hiding? You remember one? Yeah, well, what does the Bible call that? <laughs> right. No, or oh, very close. That's another word for body. Timothy. Lust of the flesh. They don't call out, right? You've got to put your hand up. Okay, lust of the flesh. Second one. Lust of the flesh. Who <laughs> this one? Ryan. Oh, sorry. Jordan. Jordan. Lust of the eyes, very good. So you got lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, these are the bad things, isn't it? Last one. Who was the last one? And the And the you and the me? Yeah, what happens when it's all about you? What is it? R Ryan. Yes, the pride of life, isn't it? And people are proud. It's all about them. Me, 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 instead of God. Okay, so Hope you learned a little bit of something about worldliness. Oops, it's not games today, it's craft. So let's stand up. And Katerina has put together a craft for us. We're going to learn, reinforce this lesson.